Welcome to the round of 16 in the upper bracket of the Fire Clash League. We have Navi taking on Contract Killer. If you don't know who Contract Killer is, let's pop a Magambo's team. So, definitely a team that we've seen around a lot in the past. There with a lot of talented players and, of course, a talented YouTuber as well out of India. Well, we'll see what they can do for the open attack here as we dive in. We see the Frozen Arrow right out of the gate here. A lot of people switching over to Frozen Arrow now that we have a release of the game. I personally have already got my Frozen Arrow up to level 15. And I didn't have to go, like, buy anything extra. I just got the stuff from the event pass. And I had a little bit saved up. And I, I was able to get it leveled up a bit there. And so... Just goes to show you that you don't have to wail out there to be able to get the frozen arrow. But if you guys are picking up the event pass there, then definitely use a creator code. If you want to use my code, it's code Eric. Thank you so much for supporting. But Akash doing a pretty good job of getting to the core of the base here. Look at this queen. Get the lock on of that single inferno. And slow down its attack speed. But also watch when she engages the town hall takedown here. Because she locks on the town hall, but she stops the damage of the town hall almost entirely like it's down to like 25 percent damage output right there when she freezes it and that reduces the damage on everybody else there around her so frozen arrow getting some work done i guess that's only with like a level 11 frozen arrow on top of that so like it's only gonna get stronger from there and it increases the base damage of the queen so that she takes buildings down in less strikes which is obviously really good but reminders making their way across the left side of the base here super barbarians work on the outside keeping them central well look at the other hero equipment we are seeing a rage gem here Lots of lightning was using this attack here, so Rage Gem pair as well when we see a lot of lightning because we're able to use all of our spells onto the lightning and then we need to still be raged and we don't have a lot of spell slots left for that, but he uses his freezes onto the defensive world champion, trying to stop these Rune Riders from being taken out by her and the world champion arrives. One more freeze, locks her down along with Molten Inferno and that should seal the deal. Baby Dragon from the backside here. Not really going to do a lot there with the air defense still standing, but he's going to be fine. He's got a minute left here. RC still hanging on strong. Still has the Spirit Fox. Baby Dragon goes in and almost able to get that Tesla down, but it's not going to be a problem all the way to finish because he's still holding a Royal Champion ability. So he can pop it for cleanup and easily pick up the first triple against Navi. And now we'll see what Navi can do in response. GG Akash. We know that Contract Killers is a very good team. They are not a pushover. They're going to put up a fight against Na'Vi. Gaku will take the first strike here for Na'Vi. It is going to be a Queen Charge into Root Riders. And he's running a level 21 Frozen Arrow. Really, really putting some ore into that. But also on top of that, he's a level 23 Giant Gauntlet as well. Looks like he's waiting on some glowy ore for some more upgrades here. Maybe shiny ore as well. I noticed something with the event passes. I noticed that they're really, really stacked with glowy ore. I also noticed that the normal amount of glowy ore that you get compared to like shiny ore makes so that you almost always have glowy ore being the limiting factor. But they tip the balance when you actually get the event pass. So if you get the event pass, then the numbers actually end up working out more balanced. Then if you don't get it, then you end up with a whole bunch of uh, with a bunch of shiny ore and not enough glowy ore to actually use it, depending on where your hero progress is at the time. But just something that I noticed there, something I observed. But let's see if Gaku can get his way in here with this frozen arrow. Lots of increased base damage for the queen, but still running the invisibility file. That's what we predicted. We predicted that all the pro players are going to be running the frozen arrow and most likely pair it with the invisibility file. But I definitely would expect that we will see some of the some of the pro players breaking out the frozen arrow with things like the healer puppet or the giant arrow and then just line up a shot there and pop it immediately. Billy has all the red air bombs hitting the queen's healers. All right, no amount of frozen arrow will save her from that, but down south here, the king gets joined by the root riders. And the king already used his ability there, but we are seeing the rage gem with the root riders because he's investing almost all the spells to the queen. But the queen just lost her healers. Frozen arrow locks on, and look how fast she's able to take that tunnel down. Insane damage right there out of that queen. Quickly and easily takes it down, but also slows down the, the damage output while she's doing it. And she'll die to the poison there, but the root riders will keep on moving here. Looking pretty solid overall. Got a skeleton spell up top there, giving a little bit of protection for uh, Wizard. That's kind of an interesting spot to throw, toss that in, but RC will pop her ability, get the multi inferno down, and it looks like he's got some balloons to swarm to the backside. It would have been nice if one of those balloons would have gotten there and triggered all those red air bombs to save the Queen's healers, but in the end, it barely slows him down. Gaku with the first triple for Navi.
With a war all tied up, one pro king will start us off with a little lightning. He's gonna pair it with root riders and super barbarians. It's a very, very strong attack at the meta right now. He's using the lightning to set up the funnel, but he did not activate the town hall with that. He is going to remove the expo, and then he will push the flame flinger to go north to go after the scatter shot and the ricochet cannon. Queen, on the other hand, is gonna make her way into the Seagull Inferno. Be nice if she had a frozen arrow, but she's gonna be running a healer puppet here. I mean, if you invested into the healer puppet, then like maybe you still want to use it. I don't know. I, I don't know. But I feel like a lot of people were waiting on investing into any queen equipment until we could see what the frozen arrow was able to do. And we are quickly seeing that the frozen arrow is very, very worth the amount of points that you spend into it. But the King of Pop is building. Surge forward there with that level 20 giant gauntlet. Here comes the Clad Castle. Freeze that up there. The Town Hall is activated. I didn't even see what activated it there. I, I thought the Town Hall did not get activated by the Earthquake there. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe, maybe I was wrong. Maybe it was activated the whole time. It probably would have been smart to not activate it though, you know? Like, it would have been smart to reduce the damage that the heroes would take on the approach there by making it so the Town Hall was never activated. But he will go ahead and use a Healing Tome onto the Root Riders. I would have expected a Rage Jam on this one here, but I guess it's uh, it's it's kind of a toss-up which one ends up being better. Going through two multi-infernos. We'll top off after it goes through the first one. And the Rage Jam obviously is going to provide a continuous benefit all the way through the entire attack. Look at the Queen though. The Queen pops her Healer Puppet, and now she's turned it into a Queen Charge. That was actually really, really good value for a Healer Puppet. That was really, really good value for a Healer Puppet because now the Queen, I thought she was going to die. I'll be real with you. I thought she was going down. But no, she keeps on moving. She survives until the end of the attack here. It seems like none of the Root Riders end up going down. And he ends with a full army. So Contract Killer gets another one on the board here against Navi. Dima's been loving Valkyries and Root Riders. This time, he's paired in five skeleton spells and six freezes with it. Only one rage, but he'll just put in a couple Root Riders onto each flank a couple valkyries onto each flank form the funnel make sure the heroes go inside of the base but also he put a siege bricks in the very very top corner i would have expected that the siege bricks would have gone central to support the heroes but look at this we are seeing a level 11 frozen arrow here from dima dima's base builder for navi it looks like picastro is out again today he was out yesterday as well i'm really curious to see if P. Castro gemmed the Frozen Arrow to max because we know that he gemmed all of his other equipment to max and he's one of the only players in the world that was doing that. There's a couple out there. There's a couple out there that did that, but out of the pro community, he has uh, definitely uh, caught my eye when he was uh, gemming up to a level 27 giant gauntlet and then everything else on top of that. So I wouldn't be surprised. But Dima just run level 11. He's had that level 15 giant gauntlet running the healing tome to go and give an extra little bit of tanking there for the Rubiters so they can continue to provide value in front of the Valkyries and make sure that the heroes stay nice and safe. He needs to get the Ziegler Artillery down soon. He's got a Skeletal Spell right there, also disabling the defensive Grand Warder. But look at the Valkyrie, or excuse me, the, uh, the P.E.K.K.A. finally goes down to the right side. And it's still got the Yeti over there. He's still got troops moving here. He's got an RC ability. That's the most important thing here. He does get the Arch Tower down. You get one more Tesla. Nope, he just goes and pops it right there. And he'll get the rest of the defenses out of the way here. And he's got a minute and 30 to clean it up. So Valkyries and Root Riders with just leveling the base into or i guess uh just blanketing the base is the more proper word with the skeleton spells to prevent any damage and then run healing tome on top of that so lots and lots of protection everything about this attack as far as spell lineup was not geared around getting extra damage output of, out of anybody it was all geared around skeleton spells giving protection free spells giving protection and the warden healing tome giving protection let's keep the triples rolling here and as we continue to make our way through the war we also need to start thinking about time because both of these teams are perfectly capable of going perfect look at this level 26 giant gauntlet and max out rage vial but also once again there is the frozen arrow Level 11 for Mustafa. Just setting up here with a Yeti blimp, able to pull the CC, able to clear that compartment, and obviously we'll set the funnel as he gets ready for Super Bowlers. But kind of an interesting path for Super Bowlers. Typically with Super Bowlers, we like to either, I, I, you know, I think we typically like to make sure that Town Hall goes down to either the Siege Machine 
or we'd like to barrel right down the middle of the base there opposite of the town hall and use a log launcher to cross through the base so this is a little bit out of the ordinary but well, we'll see what we can do got the wall breaks over to the side there are two different entries set up probably we'll use one of them for the king and we'll probably use the other one for the bullets and the electro titan but we're going to be seeing a rage gem here which honestly i'm not a big fan of rage gem with super bullets i think healing tome is better i think any attack where we're going to be piling in rage after rage after rage is going to be more beneficial to run the healing tome but it does actually give more protection for the warden walk and boost the healing output of the healers but look at this queen over to the far left side she wait a second that's actually a really good idea because typically i normally i would be really really nervous if the queen was making her way into an area like that but she's able to engage the defenses one at a time oh this is bad uh oh so the frozen arrow could slow the defenses down enough that the unicorn can keep up and maybe a saving grace here because the boulders did not get the healers. Those healers are just stuck on the Titan. That's a really big problem for him right now. Okay, I was about to say that time is going to be a critical factor in this, but I don't know if he even has the triple right now. But he does get a safe healer transfer for the queen, but he needs to get this expo under control. I feel like a wizard or something to go in there and tag it out there would be really good. He puts a minion onto it. It'll get something, but the battle builder's right there repairing. But the queen is sustaining the damage. Watch the town hall. There we go. That's frozen arrow in action. Slowing down the town hall damage. But the queen gets distracted onto the crowd. It would be really, really nice to have a higher level to get more base damage. But the healers go down. But the queen secures the town hall takedown. RC makes her way across. When RC stick in there. Oh, rip the dream. She lost her. She lost her spear fox. All right. Well, <laughs> I uh, suppose we can blame the miss on the healers i think we can definitely blame the miss on the healers there because those super bowlers went a really really long way through the base there they rocked it they did some serious work across the middle of the base there even without the healers and if those healers were on them they would have survived and given protection for the royal champion and he easily would have had the triple there so he he had the ai throw on him a little bit there and that now gives navi a chance to get ahead kazuma will do the honors what do we got here, Kazuma? Level 26 Giant Gauntlet here for Kazuma. We're in the level 10 Frozen Arrow. And we'll dive a Queen Charge in for the very bottom of the base here. It's interesting that they are already opting to use the Frozen Arrow. Even at low levels. Like, they have high level equipment. And even though this Frozen Arrow is only level 10, they're still going to prioritize it when they do a Queen Charge. Even a moderate amount of slowing effect there and the base damage being honestly right now at level 10 probably lower than their level 15 archer puppets then i i think it's kind of interesting that we are seeing it already because i think when you have the frozen arrow at level 15 i'm pretty sure that the archer puppet is a higher base damage output i think if they're both level 18 same story but ultimately the frozen arrow can go all the way to level 27 because it's an epic piece of equipment so it ultimately passes it up there i'm gonna do a cross reference here in just a second and we will look at the level 15 frozen arrow damage and compare it to the archer puppet at level 15 and so we can get a side-by-side -side comparison and so we can see exactly why we would run one over the other but you can see that they are definitely prioritizing the slow effect there over spawning archers or any of the other potential effects there because frozen arrow is going to be a staple in any queen charge or really any queen in general i think this is going to be good all around i think it's definitely worth leveled up but the queen will make her way to the town hall there slowing down the damage of everything that she engages there we go freeze the town hall slowing down his damage right there and i don't even know how much the level 10 actually reduces the attack speed there but i guess um it's like what 75 percent at max level and then every three, level, three levels down from there it is five percent less so you can extrapolate that however you like but looking like this queen is Gonna have her ability all the way through the core of the base here. Balloon Swarm the back side of the base. Doing a pretty good job with this Lalo. Got a lot of balloons going outside of the base, but he needs to get the defensive row champion down. That's his biggest obstacle right now. And this king is blocking the headhunters right now. He's got a warden right there. He does finally step through. Val where'd those Valkyries come from? Where'd those Valkyries come from? Queen steps through. Still has a healer's attack there because he was able to get the Coco Loons to actually hit the the red air bombs that were in the back side of the base but look at these valkyries where the, where the heck did these valkyries even come from did they come out of the siege barracks they had to have right the queen will break the wall 
The queen will break the wall. No, no amount of freeze effect there will get her through that wall faster. But that's where the base damage increase is going to make a big, big difference. But he does go ahead and make the Valkyries invisible. And the healers, think they can still see. And so they end up powering through anyways. The queen will break this wall here. Valkyries will break the wall. And with 15 seconds, he should build power through that. We don't have any straggling abilities, right? All right, there we go. Guys, it's going to be a lead for Navi. Kazuma's queen breaks through. We'll get the last defense down. And it is another triple on the board. On my Town Hall 16, I got the Frozen Arrow. About to go up to the next level here. So we can see that it's going to have 117 damage. My Archer Puppet is at 132. So you can see that when they are equivalent level, the Archer Puppet is the highest base damage increase. On top of like a little bit of HP recovery. Not a lot though. But just notable that the archer puppet is stronger until you have the frozen arrow a bit above it so keep that in mind here let's dive in a dig they need to get some triples here they need to make up for the miss it is electro titans and root riders got the warden working with the flame flinger. hopefully that flame is not getting hit by that mortar nope it was good it was good i was worried there for just a split second because they were close to being stacked. But the Flame Flinger will be able to lock out of the Town Hall. And the Town Hall is already activated by the Lightning that he used to remove the Monolith. Looks like he also got two Battle Builders out of the way there as well. Which will get through that area a little bit faster. But he's just trying to get the Warden to get through this Expo. That's his number one priority. And then he pulls the Warden north. The Flame Flinger keep on working. But on top of that, the Flame Flinger is going to take out this Poison Tower as collateral because they are touching. So that's a nice extra pickup right there. And there's a nice little gap between where the Town Hall is and where the Root Riders and Electro Titans are moving in. And so we don't have the Town Hall just reaching over there and dealing excess damage to everybody else over there. But the Town Hall is going down really, really quickly. And that Flame Flinger is going to keep on moving. That Flame Flinger has got a lot of HP left here. It's going to get a little bit further. Even though there's a hog up there to test for traps even further into the base there. But the healers on this one, unlike that previous one, are actually staying with the pack. Staying with the Root Riders, staying with these Electro Titans, and Electro Titans and Root Riders have a lot of synergy. Oh, that's, hmm. that's an interesting uh, base building tactic there. We typically see, I mean, it's not going to work because the Flight Flicker has so much HP, but it's always generally a good idea if you know that somebody's going to hit your base with Lightning to try to remove the Lightning value by filling in the area with Tesla so that everybody still has to go to that area. He's got a lot of time left here. The queen is barely hanging on. But look at this. Frozen arrow, once again, locking out of the defensive road champion and some other defenses and slowing them down and giving him the punch that he needs to get through there. But the road champion out in front here, trying to stay alive, trying to get through this expo. That expo does not go down, but he has the clan castle troops that pop out to the side here. This is going to be really, really close here. We're running a rage gem, which is always a good idea when we pair it with lightning because we don't have a lot of rages. Talked about that earlier, but the Warden tanking here. The King's in the loop around, and there's an open wall here. I think he just walks right in there. I think he's got out of control. Looks like he definitely does. Look at this. Super Miners. That's what was inside of his, his flame for you there. Super Miners pop up and help with the end of the attack, and they got the triple, but they need to find a defense, and it has to be under 88%. Let's dive into Klaus, but also, only you guys know... The same time that this war is happening, there is another war between the former class champs, our defending world champions, and VM Legacy. Oh, Klaus, 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 Klaus! Gets caught in the Twitter trap, catches a couple Black Air bombs. Come on, come on, Yetis. Take out the Seagull at least. They're not gonna get the single, that's for sure. The Queen won't go in the range of the single, so maybe he's okay, but he gets the Eagle Artillery down, and he gets a Headhunter down for the defensive key. Okay, I think he's okay. I think he'll work with that. He's got a Queen Charge. And he is running the Archer Puppet here. Maybe, like we were saying, the Archer Puppet is still going to be a good option until you get your Frozen Arrow to exceed it. And I, I guess both of them are relatively equivalent right now. But still opting for the higher base damage. But what I was saying there before we had a little scare with the blimp was Anarchia and VM Legacy are playing also in the round of 16 in the upper bracket of this exact same tournament, and they just started their war. So as soon as this war is decided, we are going to go over to that war, and we're going to be in the same video as we cover that one as well. So don't go anywhere after you see the result of Navi and Contract Killer, because we got the defending world champions lined up here, so it'll make a little bit longer video 
And we are in for a treat today as we see what they can do against VM Legacy. But Klaus is getting this Queen Charge to go all the way in here. Got that single Inferno under control. That was the most important thing there after he had a little bit of a, a hiccup there with it not going down with that blimp. But it's fine. He's got a complete under control here. He's got a freeze onto the model there. Probably would really like a skeleton spell right there as well. We pop the ward ability. We can do something. There we go. There's a skeleton spell. I was just waiting for it. All right, Queen. Already burned her ability, but gets past the defensive Queen. That's where, like, the Frozen Arrow is really, really good. Like, if you're engaging defensive heroes, because you slow down their attack speed, and it makes it very, very easy to power through them. I think, honestly, that is one of the biggest, biggest benefits that I have personally seen out of Frozen Arrow in general. But this mod is really, really giving us some trouble here. Finally gets through it into the defensive Grand Warden. Queen's still alive, though. Took a lot of damage to her healers, though. But the Warden and the uh, Rogue Champion is still working up by uh, the Multi Inferno. And the defensive Grand Warden ended up holding because the Monolith held for so long. But Darcy will pop her ability. Finally gets her down. And the King will provide some taking to the backside of the base there. And that should seal the deal here. As long as Klaus doesn't time fail. I think he's good, though. He's looking pretty good here. All right, Klaus gets it done. Navi's going for the perfect war. They have four on the board. And the opportunities for defense are quickly running out here for Contract Killer, but that doesn't mean they can't let up on the offense. They have to triple this one here, and they gotta pray for a defense. Papa Mogambo in with Valkyries and Rude Riders. He used to run a lot of E Drags. He used to be considered the best E Drag attacker in the world. I think that Nebrox actually has that tile, title now. But Papa Magambo is going to make his way in with the same attack that Dima used, but a little bit lighter on the skeleton spells and heavy on the freezes with a heal spell as well. Making sure to run the same basic idea, running Valkyries and Rewriters onto the flanks to make sure the heroes go directly into the core of the base. Skeleton spells, locking up the scatter shots on the left and right flank. I get through that left side though. The left side is a little bit less reinforced than the right side because he has the World Champion on the right. So keep it on that top side scatter shot there. That could be trouble. But he does get the Talon Hall down. Rewriters are going to go right through the poison. Look at the hero equipment. We are seeing a level 20 giant gauntlet. Basic equipment on the queen. Still hasn't got that frozen arrow switch just yet. Just surprising. Got it. He's got that YouTuber money, right? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, <laughs> Papa Magambo is one of the biggest uh, YouTubers out of India. And definitely a uh, major member of that community. Well, it looks like he's got to get past this defensive queen and then end onto the expo in the scatter shot. But he's got a queen ability. The queen will engage the defensive queen. Honestly, she should pop her ability right there. But he actually gets through her without popping the ability. So that works out. Got another freeze. I think he's got it. I think he's got it under control here. They got to fight a defense, though. They got to fight a defense. Who's last to attack here? It's going to be stars. So we'll have stars decide the war. I mean, if anybody's going to decide this war here. I mean, Navi will be happily making his stars because stars is one of the highest hit rate players that I have seen at Town Hall 16. I don't know what the overall hit rates look like right now, but I don't think I don't, I'm trying to remember the last time that I saw stars miss. So I guess we'll see if stars can continue his streak here and get the win here for Navi and knock Contract Killer down a little bracket with a perfect war. Look at this. Look at this. The other war just logged its first triple. Ninja just opened up over there with a nice start. And while their other attack is going on for their opener, let's dive into the attack that will decide this war. Stars will decide who moves on to the upper bracket quarterfinals of the Fire Clash League. It is going to be a... Zap into Lalo. Anti two star base. Lightning. Tried to clip that defensive queen potentially. Got a little bit of damage on her, but honestly, he missed. Like, he did get damage on her. He clearly intended to try to take her out, but he didn't get it. Level 13 frozen arrow here as the queen will make her way forward. Let's see if this unicorn can get through the defensive queen. Watch this. Watch this. Frozen arrow. Queen versus Queen. Queen locks on. Lock up for damage output and no spells required. The, the Unicorn easily keeps her topped off. The Frozen Arrow, even at low levels, provides an enormous amount of protection for the Queen. And now she'll wrap around, get joined with the King, and make her way in to potentially go to the Town Hall. No, I don't think he'll go to the Town Hall here. Maybe. 
Maybe. If it was Clouds, he'd be diving to the town hall, right? <laughs> but uh, Stars has the blimp on standby. You'll have the world champion, Jordan. And the heroes can just go fight off the defensive CC. If they can get like a sweeper out of the way, that'd be a big deal. If they can get this other poison tower triggered, that would be an enormous amount of value to gain for these heroes to protect the balloons as they make their way forward. But he's starting the balloons now. Moving to the very top of the base. Queen hanging on. Still has her ability. She'll get the first sweeper down. King will get the poison tower thrown. And the world champion will join with the balloons and we'll get some extra support there. But he needs to get this defensive king out of the way so the world champion can actually make your way past there. He's got headhunters there. I think he's got something up there to go support the defensive king takedown. But the blimp arrives to the town hall. Yeti bomb pops out and takes it. Looking good there. The skeletal spell for the backside of the base there. It's seeing all Furtos to try to slow down Root Riders in this meta right now. And right now, single Furtos, I feel like the only thing they can stop it. And that makes Frozen Arrow even better because. I don't know if you guys have seen, but Frozen Arrow can slow down the damage of a a fully charged single Inferno nut that you can actually survive through without a freeze spell, which is insane. But look at this. He's got a Swag Row Champion ability, and uh, the, the game doesn't want to let it finish there. Okay, now it goes. And it looks like Navi will get the perfect war here. Makes quick work of Papa Mogambo's base, and they will advance to the quarterfinals and send Contract Killer down pack into lower bracket and now we're over to the other match in the round of 16 of the upper bracket vm legacy is one attack in to their war with anarchia both teams have triples on the board to start us off looks like ninja and pado started us off today and now dark star will sail the next attack here let's see what happens here another set of all-star teams in fact uh, vm legacy before they got signed by vm legacy was named all-stars so if you saw the videos covering that team in the past there this is them and you can see a full lineup of their team right above my head we got Uriam was formerly a Millicene MG player Fluxy was with Tribe Gaming when they came in second place in the world championship in 2022 Ninja is a rising star out of the uh, North American circuits, one of the youngest players in Clash of Clans Esports, and obviously already has a triple on the board there, doing great work. Synthe was playing for Millicene MG before he switched over to Navi and played with them in the World Championship, and then Darkstar was playing for Strut. So, a very, very, very strong roster here out of VM Legacy. But on top of that, four out of five players on Anarchia were on the team that won the World Championship last year under the name Clash Champs. And so the only player that swapped out there was Bernal. Bernal swapped in, and then P. Castro was recruited by Navi and switched over. And I heard that uh, while they were going through their 2023 season, there were a lot of teams out there trying to like uh, persuade P. Castro to go over to their team. So I'm not surprised that Navi was the one who ultimately gave him a big enough offer to be able to pick him up right there because he's been phenomenal. But this whole team here is still stacked and Anarchia in general is completely stacked. And we talked about how Stars is one of the best Zaplalo attackers in the world, but right on par with him is Darkstar. And then I think uh, actually Rikiris from Tribe Gaming is the number one Zaplalo attacker in the world and the number one player in the world total. So. Like these, between the three of them, between Darkstar, Rikiris, and Stars, we're looking at all the best Lalo attackers in the world. And it is no doubt that he makes quick work in this base here, bringing out his signature attack. And he's got a triple on the board here for VM Legacy. So there's your history lesson. Now we can get into the war and we can see what Anarchia can do in response. Nice job, Darkstar. That was a quick and easy attack. <laughs> of course, here we go. <laughs> Rubiders and Valkyries. Again, a lot of big teams are still. You know, I, I must I must have had some serious impact on the Clash of Clans community because everybody's out here spamming. I love it. <laughs> spamming some Rubiders. Spamming some Valkyries. Just drop everything in the corner there after a basic funnel. And there we go. Just put everything in a pile. Just put it all in a pile. <laughs> That, that's what's uh, great against uh, this style base here. Like, you can put everything in a pile. I personally, I like to broadside these base here and go heavier on the Rune Riders. I've been doing a lot that for a little while there. But honestly, I think the Valkyrie version is stronger than the one that I've been running with, like, what, 12 or 14 Rune Riders? I, don't, I forget how many it is. 
but I think the Valkyrie attack is very, very strong. But typically, we just funnel out the quarter and then we just drop everything into a pile when we see these diamond style bases. And it does actually do very, very good. Also, against box bases, bases to attack the center, it also ends up being very good against that. But look at this. We gotta get the defensive queen out of the way here. Looks like she gets distracted or champion. Can we get a tag right there? Queen reaches there. Queen gets a tag. And I just saw a frozen arrow shot. Look at this. Leo! Leo! We already have a level 27 God Giant Gauntlet and level 14 Frozen Arrow. I'm surprised that if he was going to gem up the uh, Giant Gauntlet, he also didn't have enough resources to gem that Frozen Arrow to max as well, you know? <laughs> if we're already gemming. But we got level 11 Healing Tome there to heal up the Rubiters and give more protection. Like we saw earlier, we're running a lot of spells for protection for this attack here. We're running Hero Equipment that provides protection over anything else there. But the King will pop his ability there. And he will get some nice tanking out in front of the pack. And it looks like he'll get most of the defenses cleared out here. And anything that he doesn't clear directly, he will tank so everybody else can grab it. So RC ability still attacked. He'll get her to sweep through these cannons. And there goes the rest of the defenses. Easy pick up here. And Archia gets it on the board there. And uh, he's, making a, he's making a spam god real proud here. Any spammers out there? A any Anybody out here in the chat? Anybody watching on YouTube? You a spam god too? Well... Maybe uh, we can uh, we can vote Leo as our king. <laughs> oh wait, that's my job. I'm I'm already the spam god. He can be spam king though. I, I I'll be spam god. He can be spam king. I think that's fair. I think I can I can make that compromise. All right, easy day here. Leo gets it done. I don't mean to brag, but I am so much of a spammer that I purposely pick up spam calls. Yeah. I'm really serious about it. I I spam in all parts of my life, you know? <laughs> all right. Uh, Synthe, Synthe diving in for VM Legacy. We'll see if these triples can keep pouring in as he moves in with a Skelly Donut. Yeah, of course it's a Skelly Donut. It's Synthe, of course. I mean, we love to see Synthe in action. And uh, it's nice to see him finding his new home here after he finished the World Championship Circus there with Na'Vi. Now playing over here in VM Legacy. Looks like he's got the Skelly Donut taking out the Scatter Shots and the Clan Castle. Can he get these uh, Ricochet Cannons as well? He got one of them. Got one of them, but the Skeletons then split off in the opposite direction and didn't get the other one now. But he got the uh, Spell Tower out of the way here. Almost actually destroyed it, so... I guess we'll see if it resets there before he gets in there. Still got the path in the area, but while the flame is moving, looks like he's diving his heroes at the very top of the base. King running the level 14 giant gauntlet. Running giant arrow. Giant arrow. You know, we did the comparison earlier of comparing giant arrow at... Or we did the comparison of comparing frozen arrow to healer puppet at level 15. But frozen arrow also is going to be a less base damage than Giant Arrow, I think, at the same level. Or maybe it's close. I don't have my my Giant Arrow leveled up here, so I can't do like a side-by-side -side comparison. But look at that! He actually ended up getting the Giant Arrow to finish off the Poison Tower in the core of the base. And also just shoot all the way across and take out a couple other buildings as well. And he also hit the Battle Builder on its way through, so it's not repairing any of the damage that was dealt. But if you can get that thing to hit some air defenses, it one-shots them. If you can get it to hit sweepers, it one-shots those. Bunch of radar bombs going off around the monolith. But as far as, like, base damage goes, if you run Giant Arrow and you run Frozen Arrow, you can pop it very, very early into an attack. And then you can have the Frozen Arrow continue to provide damage afterwards. But you get the Giant Arrow shot to line up immediately. And then you have... The base damage of the Queen increased by a very, very large amount. And then you had Frozen Arrow increasing it by another huge amount. And you actually have, with that combination, one of the highest Queen damage outputs in the game. And you get a snipe off defenses on the opener. But obviously, Synthe doesn't have his Frozen Arrow equipped here. We'll see if he doesn't like that in the future. But for now, he's got the triple for VM Legacy. Another nice part about the Giant Arrow in a Skelly Dota specifically, is if we end up missing the Clan Castle takedown, the Skelly Dota, and it's still in low HP, you can shoot that giant arrow through the base, and you can see that it took the exact same path that would have hit the Clan Castle, and that would have actually destroyed the building before the troops came out, and it would have achieved the same function as the Skelly Dota. So it's actually a nice little backup to save the attack 
if something goes wrong. Bernal is another player who maxed out his hero equipment and he's got a level 20 giant arrow right here. So Bernal will do a queen charge and also be paired with the assistance of the king with a maxed out level giant gauntlet. So some serious, serious levels on this hero equipment, but also running because it's a Lolo. We're seeing the life gem and he could opt for the healing tome instead of the life gem. Or in the case of what we saw out of, was it Kazuma earlier? Who ran a rage gem with Lalo and then lost the Lalo? <laughs> Definitely don't do that. Every time I uh, see anybody run a rage gem with a Lalo, it tends to perform very, very, very poorly. I think the extra HP or healing is critical to make balloons in general work. But it looks like this queen will make her way forward here. Getting locked onto by that monolith. The king's working on it though. Come on, king, you can do it. We believe, king. We believe, we believe. Get that. Model it down. Got it. All right. That's going to take some of the damage off of the queen. And then she will freeze the town hall and lock up all that damage as well. I mean, frozen arrow. Lock it down. That town hall takedown. And then steps her way into the monolith. And I mean, if she's just going to take out the biggest defense that's right in her face there at all times and slow down its attack speed, then obviously that's going to benefit her greatly. But even on a, a uh, multi inferno right there that's targeting her healers, it's barely even a threat there because he's getting so much damage reduction effectively by reducing the attack speed of even continuous ticking defenses like that because an inferno you might think is just it doesn't matter how fast its attack speed is but it actually slowers the ticks of the of the beams and it does actually reduce its damage even though it doesn't look like it is taking any less shots because the beams are continuous it is doing significantly less damage but he does get that multi inferno down looks like he'll swarm his way into the multi archer tower he's got an rc ability still intact there to go ahead and make her invisible to protect her even more that's basically swag there the rc ability is swag the attack is overwhelming as he gets another triple here for anarchia and that means we are back to tie 99 little lightning used for urium as he wipes out the defenses in the middle of the base and we'll set up a flame flicker to dive in for the very bottom. Gotta keep the triples rolling. I have a really, really feel. I, I really have the feeling that this war is gonna go to double perfect. That last one between Navi and Kajar Killers did not. But I think that this one definitely has the capability, which is insane that the last one didn't. I feel like I should go back and look at the time on the uh, scoreboard from that one there and see how close it was. Because if that one attack with Electric Titan still in the healers didn't have let your titan still the healers then we probably would have had a perfect war in that other war as well and then time would have been the deciding factor so i'll look at that here real quick after this attack but it looks like uriam does get the king to dive in and secure the talent takedown level 26 giant gauntlet looks like he's just waiting on some glowy ore also looks like he's waiting on some glowy ore for his frozen arrow to get to level 21 level 20 at the moment but lalo will make his way in with the life gem raised double thing for but we'll freeze it on the approach here we can get some frozen arrow shots onto that scatter shot there. Lock it down. And come on, get, this, get, get these uh, blues down here. The frozen arrow doesn't do anything to stop these balloons from taking out the queen. And now he's gonna, they're going to go chase down the world champion. But she keeps going invisible. So she will just naturally provide herself some protection. As long as she can not get sniped off by the defensive king. We get past this model up there. RC steps into it. There we go. Lock it down. Lock it down. Good. So you got that under control here. Multi Inferno on the other side of the base. They're going to give him trouble, though. Warden. Oh, Warden goes down. Eagle Artillery Strike takes him out. And that is going to hurt the HP of all these blues. But I don't know if he's got this right now. He's going to get past the king and the queen. Oh, come on. Come on, RC. RC. Okay, RC. Goes invisible. Oh, my God. That was really, really good time to go invisible. Oh, my God. She's going to have a chance to make it. That might just decide this war. Holy cow. Did that just happen? That was some very, very seriously timed invisibility to save the world champion when she was the only way he would end up making it through. And then she goes invisible again to get past the cannon. And the Sparrow Fox carries her to a triple. VM Legacy almost had a miss there. I'll be real with you. If that world champion got hit by that defensive queen, we'd be looking at a completely different story. But as it stands, Anarchia has the pressure on again. I'm looking at the numbers here for Navi versus Contract Killer, and it looks like Navi actually won that war by only a six second total margin if Contract Killer was able to convert that. And if they converted it and got it done with six seconds left, 
then they would have been looking at a win for not against Navi there. So that's insane. That's insane to think about. <laughs> if the Steelers didn't steal it. Wow. All right. Well, let's see what happens here as a loop just dives in the world champion to format a funnel there. Didn't invest any thing on top of this. I guess just a recall. Just recall out of there after she just dove in and took out an air defense and an expo. Didn't burn her ability. Didn't burn the spirit fox. Just a very, very safe entry there to set up the pathing for the heroes. And just one spell to get it done. But down south there, it looks like he's just using a couple super barbarians to clear out down there. And I'm not sure what he's going to do down there. But he's going to get the defensive king out of the way here. Looks like we do see Archer Puppet onto the queen. Still seeing a lot of variation. But I feel like most people are going to switch over to Frozen Arrow after they get it leveled up a bit, a bit here. But this one does have a level 23 giant gauntlet. Warden running live gem. We see a lot of teams switching over to the healing tome for the Lalos, but Anarchia is largely sticking with the life gem here to try to give a little bit of extra HP out of these balloons. What is it, like 700 something once you get to level 18? It's a pretty significant amount there, and when you have so many balloons, it can make a very, very big difference. But instead of running healing tome, instead just opts to run a healing spell instead. And that will get him through the single infernos. And once the single infernos are gone, RC has no threats and she'll finish off the defenses. He's got a little bit of swag there. Uh, an extra invisibility, extra skeleton spell, extra freeze. Just using the skeleton spell for cleanup because, I mean, you got to think about this now. We're looking at a potential perfect war here on both sides. And so every single second could have an impact on the outcome of this war. 12 to 12. We ran the numbers and the split between the teams because of that very fast last attack is 20 seconds in the favor of Anarchia. So Fluxy not only needs a triple, but he needs to triple 20 seconds faster than whatever Selenio does on the final attack. And that will determine who moves on to the upper bracket quarterfinals. Fluxy's in with Valkyries and Rune Riders attacking a diamond style base. Remember, trim the funnel and put it all in a pile and just send it in but that means something goes wrong here it could end up costing a lot of time receiver red is making their way forward here we got rocket blues down south that are out of control right now he's got those rocket blues out of control looks like queen's right there she'll lock on and she'll take him out right there and he's got a lava hound right there as well got the log lecture you're gonna get the single inferno down that's good up top can we get the king to break the wall and go into the defensive world champion that'd be a big pickup over there but the world champion on offense is working away that direction right now we do have the ward ability we're seeing for here equipment level 18 healing tome keep the troops alive keep the tanking alive and let the heroes do their damage level 23 on his frozen arrow. Is that the highest we've seen so far? I mean, let's see if we can carry them through. Level 27 giant gauntlet goes off on the back side of the base. And that king's gonna do some heavy damage to these walls and also break the buildings on the other side of the walls as well. Get that expo down, that'd be fantastic. But if he gets everybody into the back end of the base there quickly, that's even better. Down south, the queen ended up leaving the base. Her frozen arrow not doing a lot there when she's not actually able to attack any defenses, but she's getting the cleanup done faster. He's got wizards. And it looks like some skeleton spells broke out of the very top of the base. RC turns back around and clean up. Look at the clock. This is fast. This is lightning fast. Rune Riders and Valkyries, one of the fastest attacks in the game right now. This one clocking in under two minutes. And he will wrap it up with a minute and ten seconds left on the clock. The exact time on the clock that Selenio needs to beat is 50 seconds remaining. So if he gets it done with 51 seconds remaining, then Anarchia moves on to the quarter finals. It is gonna be dragons, super dragons. Using the Ray Gem, he's got the clone. It looks like he's going for a super minion bomb. Super minion bomb, super dragons. I see a very, very nice drop spot right there on top of the clan castle, but he'll need to take the town hall. He'll need to get the bullet down. He needs to get the bolt infernos. And most importantly, a very, very big time saver is destroying the clan castle. We see a couple of archers pop out, but that's it. That means there are heavy, heavy troops in there that can stall him up heavy. That's what heavy troops do. <laughs> and he will drop out the super minions, clone him up, rage him up, make him invisible. Get that town hall, get the model down. 
Marnold picking up some dragons right now, but it does go down there. Town Hall looking to drop right here. Turn back around. Take out the clan castle. And got the value! Toledo! Moving fast here. Minute left here to finish it off. Minute and five seconds, really. Come on, move it, move it, move it. We got a long way to go. We got a long way to go. Time is ticking, and it's not about just finishing the attack here. Obviously, he has the triple, but he has to get it done as quickly as possible. Anything that he can do here to save time is going to make a difference in the outcome of this war and see which team ends up moving on to the quarterfinals. But the king pops his ability down south. Level 20 giant collar there making his way forward there. Queen has the healer puppet. She can spawn some healers there, and... Looks like she'll pop it right now. Get the healing output. But the warning got sniped off right there. He was running at race gym, remember? Come on. You got 30 seconds here to get it done. Looks like he's looking pretty good here. Moving fast. Moving fast. RC clears the defense. is up top. He's got the cleanup. Swarming in. He's got swag spells on top of everything else there. Tosses into the middle of the base. And our defending world champions, Anarchia, get it done and will win this war on average attack time. And they will send VM Legacy down to the lower bracket. Thank you guys for watching. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next video.